my heart cried. Fear kept me out because I became the slave of always wanting to do the right thing every time without making mistakes. But whoever fulfills destiny keeping it simple. Faith says move forward even when you are not certain about what lies ahead. I heard something from Miles Nuru. It says faith is believing God even in a silence. It's a place no one wants to be. Some of us call it waiting period. But in actual sense, God might never say anything regarding that next phase because wisdom is profitable to direct. Ecclesiastes 10.10 10. So what keeps so many of us in a particular level which might be for a lifetime when we are just too scared of making mistakes many will never fulfill destiny not because god has not provided the atmosphere for success but because they are not bold enough to pay the price it is called risk so the first enemy or obstacle to fulfilling purpose is fear when david went into the temple to eat the bread that belonged to the priests and even gave some to the people that were with him, he was taking the risk of dying, meaning he would rather die than not fulfill purpose. So he threw himself into the hands of the same God. If God will slay me, let him, but I would rather run to him and only him can feed me. Matthew chapter 12 verse 20 verse 4 how he entered, say, say how he entered the house of God and ate the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priest. You can read the account in First Samuel chapter twenty-one, verses one to nine. Recently, I had a project with a huge sum that looked impossible, and everywhere I turned to, it was like the whole world was against me. I got a no almost everywhere I turned to. I almost asked God why he couldn't take care of his own. But while this thought was running through my mind, God reminded me how he sent help to me in my final year. I had missed two papers in the second semester of my final year because I couldn't pay my school fees. And that meant an automatic extra year. But just about when the third paper was, was about to start, I got an inflow even more than what I needed. So the question was, about the two papers I had missed. After I concluded the last two papers, out of the five papers I had in the second semester, I wrote to the office of the registrar, and to my surprise, she sent out a circular in response to my request to everyone who had missed exams to come back and write the same exam on a particular day. It was the first time it happened in the history of my school, at least to my knowledge. God didn't need to say more than this, and faith rose from within. Sometimes you need the Red Sea experience to believe God for the Jordan experience. Joshua chapter 3 and chapter 4. Verse 9 of that first Samuel 21 mentioned how David eventually took the sword of Goliath, the Philistines. This means as at the time this sword was cut and shaped out, God's intention was for it to end up with David, his anointed servant, because God declares the end from the beginning. Imagine the scenario. God, the Philistines carved out, the enemies of the people of God carved out the, the sword, intending the sword for Goliath to fight the people of God. But after the event turned around, the Israelites took the sword and kept it in the temple. And that day David was hungry. God didn't just give him food, threw the food that was not lawful for him to eat. God handed over the sword to David and he became the rightful owner at that particular time. But God waited for a particular time for David to see his faithfulness in his life. Sometimes we are pushed to the wall. Sometimes we get to this particular point where we think it's all over. Where we think that God is no longer with us. Where we think there's something that is wrong with us. But God always wants to show his faithfulness even in the times of drought. Hey, listen to me. God's intention is not to slay us, but to bring us back to himself. Everything he does or allows points us back to him. And just like many who have gone ahead of us, creating a path for themselves and for other people to follow their line of success, there comes a time in their lives when they also get to the point of darkness, where they are confused about what lies ahead. But when faith comes in, it points the light, you know, the, like a torch, 
to the direction that leads to that great light that's our future and our purpose so only faith can actually bridge that path where there's no clarity and that's what we need at this particular point even though it looks as if everything around you is going south but god is waiting on you to look at him so to be in the path that leads to greatness you must dare the consequences of failure by taking that great step the devil is not worried if you remain at your current level he knows when you move up many will see your light and come to the knowledge of the truth when you truly shine hey father please open our eyes to see your truth grant us the spirit of boldness to step in by faith in the mighty name of jesus so the second enemy is comfort comfort as that 54 verse 4 says fear not for thou shalt not be ashamed neither be thou confounded for thou shalt not be put to shame for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore sometimes we refuse to take steps when our comfort is threatened we will rather remain at our current level of lifestyle than moving out but the solution is in the first step nothing ever happens in comfort nothing ever happens in comfort i've never seen a great man or a man shaped in the place of comfort it comes in the faith of trying and believing so the third enemy to fulfilling purpose is wrong teaching and that we have so much around so many teachings we have listened to have conditioned our mind to believing God is wicked and waiting on us to make mistakes then hit us further down that that you know but the truth is they are wrong they are wrong Jeremiah 29 11 says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future this guides everything God does with us so the first day you step out God's plan is to lead you to this glorious hope and future and the ability to see God in this light the easier the journey becomes because he will always be there to lead you through faith now the just shall live by faith but if any man draws back my soul shall have no pleasure in him but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul hebrew chapter 10 38 and 39 the truth is there comes a time in our lives where things are just beyond us are beyond our controls and we and we can't readily see a solution but i have seen god's move in different situations and on behalf of people thank god prayer is not just about the ability to shout but god hears even the faintest thoughts that passes through our minds hello there my name is Udwak Akman. thank you so much for watching today's teaching if this has really blessed you please do not forget to subscribe and to like and also to share there could be somebody out there that just needs to also hear what you just listened to i want to also by this video encourage you to become the journalist of your life taking note of some things the Holy spirit might want to impute into your spirit god wants to start with a new generation it can depend on god depends on us to pass the message of hope around of course you know there are so many deteriorating messages going on around but god needs you as the salt of the earth and the light of the world to pass the message of hope and let people know what he can actually do in this time and this temptation and that is where god so much depends on you thank you so much see you another time god bless you real good